All right, let's take a look at the practice test. So for the instructions, we're asked to solve each word problem. We want to round your answer to the nearest hundredth. All right, before we jump in and look at any problems, again, let's think about the formula we're going to use, and I'll show you how to solve for different variables. This is going to be based on what you're asked for in the problem. So first and foremost, if we go back to the formula for compound interest that we talked about in the last lesson, so we have A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R over N raised to the power of TN, a is the future value of this account. So it's the account balance after a given number of years. P is the principal. That means the initial amount invested. So people call this the present value of the account. R is the interest rate as a decimal. N is the number of compounding periods in a year. And then T is the number of years. So I think that we all know for a given principal, interest rate, and number of years, as N increases, the amount of money we're going to earn is going to increase. Because with compound interest, you're earning interest on interest. So the more often that your bank or whatever financial institution it is that you're working with deposits your interest, the better off you're going to be. But what we talk about in this section is what happens when N gets really, really large and approaches infinity, and we have something called continuous compounding. So basically, we're not going to use this N anymore. We're going to change the formula up, and it's going to involve this special number E. So we have A is equal to P E raised to the power of R T. So you'll notice that you have this A here, this P here, this R here, and this T here. But again, the N, the number of compounding periods in a year, that's not involved in this formula because we're going to say that we have continuous compounding in the problem. Let me get rid of this. And this special number E is going to be available to you on your calculator. It's just something you're going to punch in. It's about 2.718 if you want to approximate it. But I would always use my calculator for it because it's going to give you many, many digits and give you a more accurate answer. So the first thing is you might have to solve this for P. In other words, you might have a problem where they say, well, what's the principle? So to solve this for P, let me write, actually, let me drag this over here. Let me put a little border. So to solve for P, we start with A is equal to P e raised to the power of rt. This right here is multiplication. So to undo multiplication, we use division. I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by e raised to the power of rt. So do that over here as well. And we see that this would cancel with this. And so the formula, if you need to solve for p, is just going to be that p, which is the principal, is equal to a, which is the future value of the account, over your special number e raised to the power of r, Again, that's your interest rate as a decimal times T. That's your time in years. Let me get rid of this, and I'll just write this up here so that we have it. Let me put that right there. Now, the more challenging things to solve for would be if you have to solve for R, the interest rate as a decimal, or T, the time. So both of those are going to come up. Let me put this like this. So as you're working problems, you have to solve for both of those. Now, when you want to solve for a variable and it's in the exponent, you're going to use logarithms. So let's talk about that. Most of you have taken Algebra 2 before, so you know how to do this. And if you don't, it's not that big of a deal. We're going to cover it in more detail coming up in the next few lessons where we're talking about logarithms. So let's start with A is equal to P E raised to the power of RT. If you want to solve for, let's say, R, First, you want to isolate this right here. So E raised to the power of RT. So to do that, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by P. So this would cancel. And let's go ahead and say that this would be E raised to the power of RT is equal to, we would have A over P. Now, here's where you have to know a few things. First off, when you do something like, let's say, log of X to the power of A, by rule, this is equal to, let me slide this down a little bit. And actually, this looks like a 9, so let me make this into a better looking A. This is by rule A times log of x. In other words, this can come down out in front and multiply by that logarithm. So that's all we're really going to do here. But we're going to use another property. If you do something like, let's say, log base e of e, this is equal to 1. Because e to the power of 1 will give you e. And we'll talk about this when we get to logarithms. For right now, if you see log base e of e, that's equal to 1. But when we have log base e, we have a special name for that. That's the natural logarithm. So you're going to see that abbreviated with ln. So when you see something like this, ln of e, that equals 1. So we're going to use these properties. Let me get rid of this. And I'm going to take the natural log of each side. So I'm going to say this is ln of e raised to the power of rt is equal to the natural log, so again, ln of this a over p. You can delete this now, it's just in the way. And again, using our rule, this right here will come out in front. And so we're going to say we have rt multiplied by this natural log, 
or ln here of e. And this equals, you have the natural log of this a over p. So what we see is that, again, the natural log of e, that's going to be 1. That is log base e of e. So that's 1. Get rid of this. And let's just say that this would be rt, again, times 1, you can just leave it off, is equal to the natural log of a over p. Now, if you want to solve for r, again, this is multiplication here. So go ahead and just divide both sides by t, and that's solving for r. So that's another formula for you. So let me bring this over here. And I'm going to just get rid of this and say r is equal to this. And again, you can put another formula up. We're not going to use this today, but if somebody asks you for the time, well, the r and the t are going to swap places because, again, we had rt is equal to the natural log of a over p. And so if you want to solve for t, you're going to divide both sides by r. So just erase it from here and divide by r here, and basically you've solved for t. So these are the different formulas you're going to use for these problems. Again, you could just copy it down for your notes, and as you see different problems, just think about what you're asked to solve for, and then you could just plug in. Again, we're going to talk about logarithms in more detail coming up. All right, let's take a look at the first problem. We are told that Steve invests $2,807 in a 401k account with a fixed annual interest rate that is compounded continuously. Again, when you see that, you know you're using the formula A equals PE raised to the power of RT. After 13 years, the account balance reaches $9,044.13. What is the interest rate of the account? So it's asking for the interest rate or R. That means I want the formula that's solved for R. That's all I have to do. Let's come up here and let's grab this one. All right, so let's come down here and paste this in. So we need A, P, and T. So let's come down and say that A is equal to what? Well, this is the account balance after the given number of years. So after 13 years, that's this right here. So it's $9,044.13. The P is the principal. So that's the amount that was invested. So that's going to be $2,807. And then the T is the time in years. So that's going to be 13. So 13. So very straightforward. Just going to grab this. Let's come down here and paste this in put a little border, and we're just going to key this into the calculator. So it's nice and simple. So R, which is your interest rate as a decimal, is equal to the natural log, that's your LN there, of your A, let's write that in, so 9,044.13, over your P, P is 2,807, and then this is over your T, which is 13. So this is how you're going to key it into your calculator, and you're going to get about, so if I round to the nearest hundredth, I'm going to get about 0.09. So 9% if you convert it into a percentage. So let's come back up here. So let's say that it's approximately 9%. All right, let's take a look at problem two. So here we have Adam invests $1,051 in a savings account with a fixed annual interest rate that is compounded continuously. After eight years, the account balance reaches $1,698.49. What is the interest rate of the account? Again, we have another situation where we're trying to solve for R. So let me come back up here and grab this again. And let me just paste this in here and get rid of this right here and come up here and just write down what we need. So the A, again, the account balance after the eight years or the future value of the account, that is $1,698.49. Then your P, that's the principal, the amount that is initially invested, that's going to be $1,051. And then the T, the number of years, is going to be 8. So let's grab this, come down here and paste this in. Again, we're just going to key this into the calculator. So R, the interest rate as a decimal, is going to be the natural log, again, that's the LN, of your A is 1,698.49 over your P, that's 1,051. And then this is over your T, which is going to be 8. So again, if I key this into the calculator and I round to the nearest hundredth, I'm going to get about 0.06. So if you think about 0.06, again, as a percentage, that's 6%. So let's say it's about 6%. All right, for problem three, we have that Daniel invests a lump sum of money in a savings account with a fixed annual interest rate of 5% that is compounded continuously. After seven years, the account balance reaches $5,676.27. ,27. 
how much was initially invested. So in other words, what was the principal? So we've already figured out how we could solve for P. Let me go ahead and grab this real quick and come back down here and paste this formula in. This is what we're gonna use. Let me put a little border and come back up here and fill some stuff out. So we need A, that's the account balance after seven years. That's $5,676.27. We need R, which is the interest rate as a decimal. This is as a percentage is 5%. So as a decimal, that's 0.05. And then we need the number of years, that's T. So T is equal to seven. Let's come down here and paste this in. All right, I'm just gonna tell you, you have to be really careful if you're keying this into a calculator based on the calculator you're using. If you're keying this into an online calculator, then you're probably okay. But if you're using a handheld calculator like a TI-83 or something like that, you have to be really, really careful with this problem. So let me plug in and I'll show you what I mean. So P is equal to, for A, you have 5,676.27 over E. Again, that's a special number. Your calculator will have that raised to the power of RT. So R is 0 0.05 and then times T is seven. Now, if you wanna key it in like this, so 5,676.27 divided by E raised to the power of, you do this multiplication first. So 0 0.05 times seven would be 0 0.35. If you wanna key it in like that, you will get the right answer no matter what calculator you're using. You don't have to take any special steps. This is what I recommend just to guard against errors. If you don't wanna do that, let me show you what could go wrong. So let's say you're keying this in to a TI-83 or something like that. And you just say, okay, I have 5,676.27 and you hit the divided by key. You have your special number E and then you hit the to the key. So we're basically raising this to a power. But now you have as the next guy, your 0.05 and then times seven. Looking at this, just in this form right here, what does the calculator wanna do first? Remember the order of operations. We know that raising to a power is a higher priority than division or multiplication. So it's gonna do e to the power of 0.05 first before it does anything else. And then it's gonna be faced with division and multiplication, and the division occurs to the left, so it's then gonna do that one, and then at the end, it's gonna multiply by seven. So you're gonna get the wrong answer. So basically what you would wanna do is wrap this with parentheses so that it does this first and has the highest priority, and then you would basically have this problem here. So this would then be equal to the 5,676.27 divided by your E raised to the power of 0.35, and that will give you the correct answer. So that would give you approximately 4,000 if you round to the nearest hundredth. So let me get rid of this. And we'll say that this is about, or approximately, 4,000. And so that would be $4,000 for the principal. So let's come back up and say that the principal was about $4,000. All right, let's take a look at problem four. So we have that Harry invests a lump sum of money in a bond fund with a fixed annual interest rate of 7% that is compounded continuously. After 17 years, the balance reaches $10,775.05. How much was initially invested? So in other words, what was the principal? So again, coming back up here, this is the formula we want. So let me come down here and paste this in. And all we want to do is come up here and grab our information. So A, the account balance after 17 years, that's going to be $10,775.05. Then we have R, the interest rate as a decimal. It's 7%, so that's going to be 0 0.07 as a decimal. And then the T, the time in years, is going to be 17. Let me grab this real quick and come down here and paste this in. And let me do this like this. So you're just going to plug in. Again, if you're using a calculator like a TI-83, just be really careful. You can do the R times T first if you want or you could wrap stuff with parentheses. Again, you just have to make sure that you're forcing your calculator to do things in the right order. So we're gonna say that P is equal to your A, which is 10,775.05, divided by your E raised to the power of R times T. I'm just gonna wrap this here for clarity. So 0 0.07 and then times 17. Again, if you keyed in like this, you won't have any issues. And so this would give me approximately, let's say $3,278 if you round to the nearest hundredth. Just come back up here and paste this in. So I'll say it's about, or approximately, $3,278. That was the amount that was initially invested. All right, let's take a look at problem five. So here we're told that Jacob invests a lump sum of money in a certificate of deposit account with a fixed annual interest rate of 
that is compounded continuously, and then after 20 years, the account balance reaches $7,863.03, how much was initially invested. Okay, so let's grab this once again, and let's come down here and paste this in. Let's put this like this. So again, we're told the account balance after 20 years is $7,863.03. We're told that the interest rate as a decimal, again, it's 7%, so as a decimal, that's 0.07. And then we're told that the time here, it's gonna be 20, again, for 20 years. So let's grab this come down here and paste this in and let's just plug in. So P, your principal, is equal to, again, your A is going to be 7,863.03. This is over. Your E, raised to the power of R, is 0 0.07 times T, which is 20. Again, if you're going to key this into a TI-83 or something like that, just wrap this with parentheses. So I get about let's say $1,939, so $1,939, if I was to round to the nearest hundredth, so let's go back up and say that this is about $1,939, again, for the principal or the amount that was initially invested.